So my name's Michelle Gellis, and I am an acupuncture physician. I practice in Florida. I had a practice for over 20 years in Maryland, and I am currently on the doctoral faculty at Yosan University in LA. Before that, uh, I taught at the Maryland University of Integrative Health starting in 2003. And I have been teaching um, facial and cosmetic acupuncture classes internationally since 2005. Um, here's some of my publications. I've been published a few times in the Journal of Chinese Medicine. And um, I will be coming out to Scottsdale October 19th and 20th. And at the end of the webinar, I'm going to give you a discount code that you can use to register for the class. And um, if that class doesn't work with your timing, here are some other classes that I'm teaching. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but my classes cover acupuncture, uh, facial acupuncture, facial cupping, and gua sha microneedling, and you can get all the information at facialacupuncturaclasses.com. So what I'm going to talk about today is facial acupuncture and microneedling. So within the big heading of facial acupuncture, we have cosmetic facial acupuncture and neuromuscular facial acupuncture. And uh, facial, cosmetic facial acupuncture, the way that I teach it incorporates the actual acupuncture plus facial cupping and facial gua sha. So every cosmetic facial acupuncture treatment that I perform, I include the needles, the cupping and the gua sha. So there's been a lot of media attention over the past five to 10 years on facial acupuncture. A lot of celebrities have been getting facial acupuncture. It's been shown in movies, it's all over social media. And when I first started teaching facial acupuncture, no one had really heard of it. They thought maybe it was some new trendy technique, but um, it's actually been around for a very long time. And I didn't put these images up to frighten anyone. I put these images up because there's um, a lot of different ways to practice facial acupuncture. Some people just think they can grab a, ba a box of needles and you know, hey, I'm an acupuncturist. I'll just put some needles in my patient's face or in my face and see what happens. I know where the acupuncture points are. Um, this picture down here was from a physical therapist that they had posted. So all of these came off of social media, people showing their facial acupuncture techniques. And um, m most of these are fairly old at this point, but when I when I saw them coming through my social, I was just horrified. So um, I, I need to let you know that facial acupuncture can look just like this picture on the left. This is um, an example of the technique that I teach. These are all my mandatory points with a couple of intradermal needles and some extra needles put in just to address concerns. So it does not have to be this time-consuming, heavy needle-centric uh, procedure. And for those of you who are students who've maybe heard a little bit about it, but you're not quite sure, um, understand that facial acupuncture is very effective and it doesn't have to be uh, something that it takes up a lot of your time or uses a lot of needles. 
And it's also not some new trendy thing. Facial acupuncture has been around since the Song Dynasty. And what it can do is, uh, what I tell people when they ask, I say it can take anywhere from five to 15 years off of your appearance. It works with your chi, your blood, your body fluids, the zong and the fu. The way that I teach it, I incorporate a full body acupuncture treatment with every cosmetic treatment. I don't just treat from here to here. I treat the entire person. Uh, it's great for helping to lift the face. So it's not just a skin level treatment. And it also treats the person on a very deep level. So you're going to get the collagen uh, wherever you're putting the needles, you'll get the collagen. Um, it induces collagen wherever you put the intradermal needles. And it also addresses the underlying disharmonies that can cause us to it look like we age prematurely. And the really the important thing is to have really good techniques, I call it precision needling, where you're using as few needles as possible in order to get the biggest kind of uh, results, bang for your buck. Um, and I'm a worsely trained five element acupuncturist for I guess kind of a dying breed, but it was the way that we were taught was uh, law of least action. So very few needles, Japanese style, very gentle needling, very thin needles. And so I incorporate that into my techniques that I teach. So one of the things that's important to know about the face is that it is very unique with respect to the rest of the body. The face has more uh, muscles per square centimeter than any other uh, part of the body. It has more nerves. It's more heavily vascularized. And it is the repository of all the heat in our body because heat rises. And that is why treating the face requires specialized training. The American Acupuncture Council requires that if you're going to carry their insurance that you get specialized certification in facial cosmetic acupuncture because they want to know that you're not going to cause nerve damage, bruising, or some other other sort of injury. You you know where the acupuncture points are on the face, but there is a right and a wrong way to do your needling when you're trying to lift the face and induce collagen production. So one of the things that's unique about the face is the face is the only place on our body where the muscle is directly connected from bone to skin. Everywhere else on our body, our muscles are, they either go from bone to bone or bone to joint, and which is that is why you can move the skin on your face without moving any bones or joints. You can raise your eyebrows, you can smile, and you don't have to move any bones. And the face, you can see all these layers here. The face has many layers. Um, we have this very interesting layer, which only exists on the face, and it's called the mass layer. And so the mass layer, is, you have skin, and then you have some superficial fat, and then you have this mass layer. And that is what allows the muscle to communicate with the skin. And so when we're treating the face, we really need to get into this mass layer to help the face so that it can kind of lift itself. 
One of the things that I go over in my classes that's really important is uh, different types of facial expressions and how they can show up on the face. And this isn't just because of wrinkles, but if you think about the emotional underpinnings of some of these facial expressions that we make and what they might signify. Um, a lot of people are getting Botox and they can't, they can't express anger. So that emotion rises up. Where does it go? Um, it, it, you know, can get trapped in our throat and it can get trapped in our head. We can get headaches. We can get neck pain. We could get kind of a lump in our throat. Uh, we can have issues with our liver and gallbladder and just, you know, GI issues from not speaking our truth. And that's just one example. But your patients will call you and they say, well, I have these really bad nasal labial folds. And if you don't know what they are, um, you, you won't know what to do. So, um, part of getting educated through a class is learning what is a nasolabial fold. So a nasolabial fold goes from your nose down to your lips, marionette lines. There used to be these puppets back in the 1950s. Um, and in the early sixties when I was born and, uh, they had these marionettes and they would get these lines right here. So these are called marionette lines. There's crow's feet, frown lines. These are hooded eyelids. And then these right here are called wolf lines. And those are from being very angry. So if you see someone that has those, let's stay away from them. Um, other signs that people might talk about are the dark darkness under the eyes, which can be the kidneys or even the forehead lines, which can also be a sign of someone who's on high alert all the time or someone who's frightened. If you think of a toddler that is their lip is trembling and they're tightening up their chin, um, over time you can get this pitting, pitting in your chin. So there's a lot of benefits to cosmetic acupuncture, um, not just uh, appearance wise, but uh, functionality. And again, kind of the emotional benefits. And um, I have a marketing package that goes with uh, my classes. And this is just one of the pieces from it. Um, so when you're thinking about the benefits for your patients, we have the skin level benefits. As I mentioned, it stimulates collagen and elastin. Cosmetic acupuncture carries nutrients out to the cells. It can help to reduce dark spots that we get when we age. You know, the big dark spots that people get on the back of their hands, their chest, their face. And an increase, the cupping in gua sha increases blood flow to the skin. As far as the overall health, when patients are getting cosmetic acupuncture, they enter a state of deep relaxation, which helps their immune system. It helps their endocrine system, helps to regulate the hormones and improves digestion because you're going to be doing points on the stomach and the spleen and the large intestine and the small intestine, and it enhances immunity on a muscle level. So the muscles, again, on your face are connected to the skin. So when the muscles get tight, that's when you get those skin wrinkles. So you want your face to be relaxed and calm. So if you're calm, your face is calm, the skin will lie nice and flat as opposed to all tight. Um, so it helps to release muscle tension and 
It also enhances the tone of the muscles. So um, your muscles in your face work better and therefore reduces wrinkles on the face. So those are all the benefits for your patients. The benefits for your practice are it um, allows you to have this additional source of revenue. And since insurance doesn't pay for cosmetic procedures, this is um, something you don't have to deal with insurance forms. It's cash, maybe not physical cash, but your patients will write you a check or they'll Venmo you, uh, maybe they will pay you in cash, but it's um, cash in your hand without having to deal with insurance. And it also will open your practice up to new clients who might have not ever thought of going for acupuncture. When they find out that you can help with um, different neuromuscular or cosmetic concerns, they're more likely to come see you because people will spend money on their appearance long before they will spend money on their health concerns. And it also helps to kind of um, set your practice apart. Not a lot of practitioners do cosmetic acupuncture. I train, I don't know, I, I don't know, hundreds of practitioners every year. And, um, you know, there's, there's a fraction that will go and they will specialize. And then there's another chunk that will put the work in and get good at it. And they will offer it as a service. But most practitioners come out of acupuncture school. They, um, you know, they want to uh, specialize in treating pain or infertility and, um, having this as a skill set is really something that can help you to set yourself apart. Um, the client satisfaction is phenomenal. Uh, when I when, during COVID, when I shut down, I was in Maryland. I had to shut down for almost three months, and the people that were ringing my phone off the hook were all my cosmetic patients because they really miss their cosmetic treatments. And there's not a lot of equipment you have to buy. Um, really everything you need, you can learn in a weekend class. And um, so it's, it's something you can easily incorporate into your practice. So what exactly is facial, cosmetic facial acupuncture. Um, so it uses Chinese medicine to enhance and maintain your appearance. So I do a lot of cosmetic acupuncture on younger people, like they were getting a facial. They just want to maintain their youthful appearance and um, as I mentioned, it brings blood and chi and balance to the skin, the muscles, the fascia of the face and the neck and um, helps with inflammation, discoloration and the little intradermal needles and threading and microneedling can help with those fine lines and wrinkles. Um, Let's see, I went through a lot of this, blah, 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 blah. Um, again, a lot of the stress and tension that we hold on our face and our neck, people hold tension in their neck, the back of their neck, um, this, all of this can uh, be dissipated with cosmetic acupuncture. And on a spiritual level, if you think about your emotions, all the emotions that we have, where, how do we express them right here, right? All of the emotions are expressed right here. So if you can help to kind of smooth some of this over, it, if they've done studies where if someone just smiles, they feel happier 
And if someone frowns, they feel sad. So um, just helping people to get their face to a place where it's moving more smoothly and all of these signs aren't etched on their face so they don't look angry or sad or worried or fearful, it can help their emotional health. Um, so the most common questions that I get are, how long does a treatment take? And the answer is, it depends. Um, for me, from the minute a patient walks in the door until the minute they walk out the door is about an hour and 15 minutes, sometimes an hour and a half. It just depends on how you do your payment and your scheduling and rescheduling and um, how much time you're spending doing like uh, fine, like intradermal needles, things of that nature. How long do the needles stay in for? Again, it depends anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, depending when I get the needles in quickly, I leave the room, the patient's on the table for a little longer because I'm going to another room and I'm seeing another patient. Uh, does it hurt? The truth of the matter is my patients are so relaxed when I'm doing cosmetic acupuncture and I use very high quality, very thin needles on the face. I use tubes and most of my patients are either asleep while I'm putting needles in their face or extremely relaxed. I do some ear points and other things to calm them down. Um, my treatments are about uh, once a week. And the way that I teach cosmetic acupuncture, bruising is not common. Certainly it can happen, but it's not common. And how many treatments is a, it's a big question to unpack because there's a lot of things that go into it. At the very least, it takes anywhere from six to 12 weeks for your skin to produce collagen. So most of my patients will commit to coming once a week for 12 weeks. If they're younger, if um, they have fewer signs of aging, if, um, you know, there's a lot of factors, diet, heredity, skin color, all these things. Um, did they use sunscreen? Do they smoke? What's their diet like? There's so many things that can go into this question. A kind of a general rule of thumb is, I, for most people, it's about three months. So I think this is a little video. Here's me. I think I was actually um, at the courtyard um, in Old Town Scottsdale when I was teaching this class. So Okay. Um, next question I get all the time is, does it work? So this um, top picture here was a patient of mine. She was a pharmaceutical rep. She came to me for years for shoulder, neck, wrist, elbow. She was always carrying this heavy bag. And she first came to see me. She was in her 30s. And um, right around her early 40s, she said, she took one of my brochures that I had in my waiting room. She said, 
does this facial acupuncture stuff actually work? Uh, I'm like, no, I just, anyway, I might've been a little sarcastic with her, but I said, yes, it does work. And um, why? And she said, well, you know, I'm getting my eyelids, want, you know, they're getting a little droopy. I'm starting to feel like my eyelids are getting droopy. And I said, well, get on the table. And I treated one, just one side. So I did my protocol. I treated her eyebrow, forehead, some scalp points. And I left the needles in for about 20 minutes. I came in and I took the needles out and I snapped a picture. And then I handed the mirror to her while she was laying down and she looked horrified. I said, what's the matter? She goes, I can't go home like this. I'm all crooked. So, um, cause I just one half of her uh, lid and, and brow was completely lifted. So I treated the other side and she came to see me for cosmetic acupuncture for the next uh, 12 years or so. Um, and the thing about your cosmetic patients is they will come, they are like clockwork. So I had patients that came to see me once a week for 20 years. I had a few of them. Um, and then the ones that came once a month and for them, it was just part of their routine and they weren't necessarily wealthy. This was just how they took care of themselves and it enabled them to not have to go and get the Botox and the injections. And, you know, once they got into their fifties and all their friends were getting all this stuff done and starting to look a little weird they just came to me. So um, another patient, um, she had a lot of jowling and the sides of her mouth were turning down. And after about three treatments, she came in and she said her husband said she looked happier. And I said, please don't make any expression at all. I want to take a picture of you. And this was her making absolutely no expression. And it's not a huge difference, but you can see how the corners of her mouth had just completely transformed um, during treatment. And I did these in black and white because the after pictures were a little different color because of the sun coming in the window. So I wanted apples to apples. A um, couple of other before and afters, patient with a scar. Um, I did a lot of cupping, intradermal needles, some gua sha, um, and the scar flattened. This was another gentleman that came to see me. He had really deep nasolabial folds. They were so deep that when he laid down, they were still there. Um, and it, it took a while. It took about three months, but um, they really smoothed out. So facial cupping and gua sha is another piece of cosmetic acupuncture. I don't have a clock. Um, if someone can like, I don't know, give me the high sign when we got about 15 minutes left. I have no clock and I'll just keep talking. So um, it's 5.05. Oh. So you still have some time. Okay. Thank you. Um, so facial cupping and gua sha is just a wonderful, wonderful addition to uh, cosmetic acupuncture. It doesn't take a long time. I know there are people that just te teach um, facial cupping and just teach facial gua sha, but I, I focus on the needles. And then at the end, I do like 10 to 15 minutes of cupping in gua sha just to get that blood out to the skin, to move any inflammation, to kind of sculpt the face, break up those fascial adhesions. And everyone just kind of floats out of the treatment room because it's very, very relaxing. So again, as I just said, it brings blood and chi circulation to the skin. It increases fibroblast activity, which stimulates collagen and elastin production. It can release tight fascia, um, which can be a problem for people who have any sort of 
disharmony in their face as far as their musculature from stroke or Bell's palsy. But even just people that have those like forehead lines, you get in there, you do some gua sha, it just relaxes the forehead, especially between the eyebrows. Um, the cupping helps with lymphatic drainage. And it also helps with inflammation, like if someone has rosacea, so it can help on a skin level to release some of that heat. And over time, it will help to strengthen the vascular integrity of the face, which is so important because as we get old, uh, we get those little spider veins. I know if you're young, this is all horrifying, but if you, <laughs> if you look at someone in their 70s, you'll see they have little spider veins here, uh, maybe on their cheeks, they'll have the dark spots. And doing the cupping in gua sha can really help for that to give your skin an appearance more of like a very young person. If you think about a very young child's skin and how flawless it is, um, really bringing the, all that yin and harmony back into the skin. Um, I use glass cups and uh, I just use two different ones. They're small, they're specially designed for the face and the gua sha tools that I use are uh, jade, they're real jade. And I just use one shape. I don't get into all these shapes and sizes and I, I like to keep it simple. Jade is very much a part of our medicine. It tonifies the skin. And the way these are shaped, uh, they can sculpt along the jawline. You can use it for under the chin. You can work along the temporalis, down the back of the neck. And so they're kind of an all-purpose tool. Um, and... Uh, there's information about these. I don't want this to be a sales presentation, so I'm just moving along. Um, I talked a little bit about treating expression lines, and um, I've just finished writing a, a book on facial, neuromuscular, facial, and cosmetic acupuncture. It's about 600 pages, and there's um, an entire chapter devoted just to treating expression lines and understanding which muscles are used to make which expressions and then using facial motor points to kind of release the muscle so that the skin can lay flat and those all those different lines and wrinkles can relax as well because if you relax the muscle you relax the face. So you want your face to be relaxed and not tight. Um, this was uh, this was actually taken in one of my classes. One of my students was doing cupping and working across the neck. I don't ever recommend cupping up and down the neck. They were just working across the neck. And people, I've seen people as young as 17, 18 with those tech neck lines um, and he was just working across the neck and released the entire platysma and the skin just laid flat and voila. And this is just one treatment. So you can imagine over time how this can be beneficial uh, because what what's happening now is people's heads are down and so they're getting physical lines. And then um, the same way that when people's cores aren't strong, their backs can go out. If you think of the opposite, if uh, your neck is being stretched like this, you're going to end up with um, weak muscles in here and things will start getting a little floppy floppy so um this is before and after treatment of a patient of mine she was in her 70s and she had really deep um muscle she had her 
husband was very sick for a very long time and lots and lots of anguish um, and through intradermal needles, gua sha, cupping, um, I was able to get this whole area to just relax. So neuromuscular facial acupuncture is also um, uh, classes that I offer. And if you learn this and you specialize in this, now you are opening yourself up to a whole world of people. If you guys live in Arizona, you're kind of like my population here in Florida. And um, as people get older, they're more susceptible to trigeminal neuralgia. They're going to have arthritic conditions, which can cause uh, the trigeminal neuralgia, the TMJ. Um, the incidence of Bell's palsy is going up um, for a lot of reasons. Um, things like MS, ptosis, myasthenia gravis, these, a lot of these are diseases of the face, very unique to the face that can especially afflict the elderly. Although I treated Bell's palsy patients, my youngest was two years old and I had um, college students with Bell's palsy. But if this is something that you optimize for on your keywords, on your website that you treat, you will be the go-to person because not a lot of people really specialize in it. And I had people coming to me from two hours away um, just to get treated for these conditions because I had it, you know, on my website, this is something I treat. So um, some of the advanced skills and protocols that I teach like scalp acupuncture, there are areas of the scalp that affect the face, facial motor points that are very unique to treating the face submuscular needling, which is a technique that I teach where you actually go underneath some of the muscle groups to help with the fascial adhesions and bring energy to the different muscles and then um, facial cupping, which I talk about. So scalp acupuncture, if you're not familiar with it, it's great, uh, great stuff. I love it. I, um, I know Dr. Jason Howe, um, treated my son when he was an infant when I lived in Albuquerque back in the late 90s. Um, and I studied with him. And uh, so this is a cross section of the scalp. And um, you have the skin, the cutaneous tissue, tissue, the aponeurosis. And then we have here the loose connective tissue. So you would needle in here along the scalp in areas that correspond to the face. And this can help with uh, neuropathy and with muscular concerns of the face. And it's something you can use as a standalone treatment or you can weave it in to your facial treatments. Um, it's a fairly new branch of acupuncture. It's only been around since the 1950s. Didn't become popularized until the 1970s. And it's you. It's not acupuncture points. It's used to stimulate parts of the brain that correspond to different parts of the body. Um, and it's based on your neuroanatomy. And it's really wonderful. Like if you have a patient with trigeminal neuralgia, and you can't needle their face because it's too sensitive, you can still do the scalp acupuncture. The facial motor points, uh, we have motor points all over our face. And fortunately for us, many of the motor points, the facial motor points are acupuncture points. So um, using the motor points, they're like a reset switch to the muscle to get the muscle to function properly. Most of the people that teach motor points are like sports medicine people. There are fabulous people out there teaching sports medicine, acupuncture, but I only, I only go from, well, from here to here. <laughs> I mean, in my teaching, I see patients from all walks of life. 
Um, but uh, the, uh, the motor points on the neck and the face are uniquely suited to get these muscles um, working again. So here's an example. I think this was in a class in, uh, pretty sure I was in Asheville and one of my students had had Bell's palsy many years previously and um, was unable to purse their lips together. They had trouble drinking from a straw when they brush their teeth, they couldn't really spit only like on one side of their mouth. Um, and I was doing some cosmetics demo on her and she mentioned the Bell's palsy, like half kidding, half serious. Like, can you, can you get this working again? It's been like 10 years. And so I put the motor point in for the mentalis and you can see as soon as I put the needle in, her chin started twitching and then I stimulated the needle and um, it really, it just completely woke the muscle up and she reported to me that after the treatment, her, she had almost complete function of the muscle and subsequently she had treated herself a couple of times and the problem never came back. Um, Submuscular needling is something very unique that I teach that works on the facial muscles and some of the auricular muscles behind the ear. And essentially, uh, it really it's great for long term paralysis um, and it, it really helps to wake up certain muscles. Um, just going to talk about the frontalis. So the frontalis goes here. And what you can do is take muscle, muscles, take needles and needle right underneath that frontalis. And um, it, the frontalis lifts your eyebrows up and people that have had Bell's palsy or stroke, or even if they just have a lot of forehead wrinkles and they need this muscle to function properly, getting underneath that muscle with some needles can really be beneficial to get those muscles to function um, better. And this is what it looks like.
Okay. Last but not least is microneedling. Uh, microneedling is, um, I have a uh, business size. Aculift is my company and I sold uh, derma rollers for many years. And for many years, I was teaching and my students asked me about microneedling, microneedling, microneedling. And I really, I was pretty committed just to derma rolling. Um, it's very effective and it doesn't require batteries or electricity or a lot of gizmos and gadgets. Um, and about four years ago, um, before the pandemic, I, I, or right, it was right around the time of the pandemic, I got, I, I was getting a lot of pressure from my students and I said, fine. And I spent about a year looking at different microneedling devices. And so I, um, tried a lot of them and I came up with kind of the best of all the features that I liked in different devices that I used and the Aculus microneedle pen was born. So what is microneedling? Um, oh, wait, I have a little video. So this is kind of what, ugh. here we go. Quick little video. So essentially you have this pen and um, you have a needle cartridge that goes on it and you, uh, the little needles go up and down and they make teeny tiny little holes in the skin. And um, these little teeny tiny holes stimulate collagen. And it also allows serum to be absorbed in the skin. Um, the nice thing about it is it's quick. An entire session's like 15 or 20 minutes. Um, it does only work on the skin level. It's not going to help to lift the face or any of the other things that I've been talking about for the past, however long I've been talking. Um, but it can help with the lip wrinkles, the crow's feet, and a lot of, you know, the neck, necklace lines, skin discoloration, back of the hands, chest. You can use it on stretch marks, all different types of skin disorders. And it's very fast. And then uh, you do a treatment and then you wait a month and you do another treatment. And um, most places, you know, in the U.S. are charging anywhere from three to four hundred dollars for a single treatment. So it's um, a great option for bringing more income into your practice. Um this was my original pen. Now I have the platinum pen. We don't have the turquoise pens anymore, but um, you can see some before and afters. And uh, it also is great for hair regrowth. So um, you can see the before. This was, these were my eyebrows. And uh, if you look at pictures of me from five years ago, or whatever, my eyebrows were probably drawn on. Um, and I started microneedling my eyebrows. And what I noticed was um, I didn't need to pencil in my eyebrows anymore. And you can see, I don't know if you can see me. This is real hair. It's not microbladed or tattooed or drawn on. Uh, my, my eyebrows got really ridiculously bushy, actually, from microneedling. And for the first time in my life, I had to go and start getting my eyebrows waxed. So I got rid of one problem and I created another one, but um, I have eyebrows. So it does work. Um, these are what the needle cartridges look like. Um, and as I mentioned, it's great for a lot of different skin conditions. It's relatively comfortable. If your patient's not all that comfortable, you can use numbing cream. The treatments are fast. You can treat a large area. Um, and the results last up to five years. So um, they, uh, the pen comes with two batteries or you can plug it in. Um, and it there are some similarities between cosmetic acupuncture and microneedling, but microneedling by and large is for skin level issues and cosmetic, ac whoops, cosmetic acupuncture gets underneath and treats the root cause of a lot of the problems and is better for lifting um, and things of that nature. 
Um, why would someone come to you for microneedling? The way that I teach microneedling is I include a full body treatment with it. So um, kind of I take the pulse, I look at their tongue. So I give them acupuncture in their body and then I microneedle their face. They're not going to get that at a Medi spa and um, numbing cream. Some people need it. Some people don't. Uh, you cannot do microneedling and facial acupuncture at the same time. This whole conversation just came up. I have a Facebook group. It's got about 8,000 acupuncturists in it. It's called facial acupuncture. And uh, there was a discussion about this today. Maybe it was yesterday. I don't know. Um, but I do not recommend doing both at the same time. Um, they're doing two very different things. And my recommendation is you do cosmetic acupuncture, cosmetic acupuncture, cosmetic acupuncture, microneedling. And so three cosmetic acupuncture and one microneedling treatment, not at the same time, unless you just wanted to focus on microneedling, let's say here or here or here, and then you could do your facial acupuncture elsewhere. How many treatments? Uh, four to six is what's right for most people. And how much should I charge? I tell my students, call some of the Medi spas, find out what they're charging and charge just a little more. Um, when you're looking for a device, you want something that's going to be a minimum of 14,000 RPM. That's how fast the needles go in and out. You want to make sure the tip has a bayonet, which is going to lock in. Um, you want that versatility of batteries and a cord. You want something that's easy to adjust and read, like what speed are you on? Something that's going to have a warranty. A lot of these microneedle pens, that you, these cheap pens that you see people are selling online that tips are, aren't sterile. They have no warranty. Something happens. Oh, well, the tips come loose, they get backflow from the fluids from your patient into the pen and they can get into the next person. Um, so uh, you want something that is a complete system that has marketing material that comes with it, products that come with it. So you're not having to figure all this out and training. Um, so just to recap the importance of training and that was that was a class in Asheville. I thought it was my class in uh, my last class that I taught in Phoenix. Anyway, um, the importance of getting trained. Um, you want to learn about contraindications with cosmetic acupuncture. You want to learn good protocols and techniques. You want to understand the theory you want to really be familiar with the anatomy of the face um, for safety reasons. Uh, you want to learn about different tools that you use and how to use them. Products, what's good, what's bad. Um, skincare, you know, how, we're not dermatologists or most of us aren't. Um, how do you teach your patients to take care of their skin between treatments. Um, you wanna make sure that whatever class you take has a lot of hands-on practice. You don't wanna sit there and get lecture, 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 and you only have a half a day to practice. The way my classes are designed now is all the lecture is, it's all recorded, you, get it when you sign up for a class you watch the lecture you own it forever all the handouts and then you come we do a review i do a demo and you have two days to practice um and that that's something i started since um 2020 because i found that um people really appreciated being able to review the demos and everything over and over again and it means that they only have to be in a classroom for two days because I incorporate 
so many different things into my class. It used to have to be a three day class. Um, and at the end you get a certificate. So um, these are all the different classes that I teach. My basic certification, which is what I was just talking about, which includes facial cupping, gua sha, microneedling, derma rolling, skin care. Um, and then I also have my neuro class, my anatomy of expression, self-care, ethics, when you're doing cosmetic acupuncture, safety, red light therapy, and then an advanced techniques class. I also offer a one year advanced certificate course. You can take as long as you want to finish it. I call it one year because it's 12 modules. So it's everything in the basic class plus all the other modules. You do it online. You have at, you have entrance to a two day hands-on class plus monthly online mentoring like we're doing right now. I do monthly mentor sessions but you have as long as you want to finish. And uh, you can start when you're a student, uh, but you can't needle in class until you're licensed, unless you're taking my class at a school where they will allow you to needle. So um, I think that's, oh, uh, I said, if you stay to the end, you would get the uh, discount code. Um, so my next class is going to be, I mean, my next class in Arizona is going to be at Scottsdale in October. If you can't wait, I'm going to be in LA at Yosan. Well, I'm going to be in Baltimore. Oh my goodness. In a week, <laughs> 10 days, whatever. Um, so if you want to come out to Baltimore, I'll be there. Then I'll be in LA at Yosan. Um, and after that, Vancouver, Boulder, and then Scottsdale. I'm going to be in Toronto here, but I haven't firmed that up. And if you register for any of my uh, classes and you put in the code 10 off, you'll get 10% off. And it may not sound like a lot, but um, it uh, for some of my you know bigger classes, it's uh, quite a significant discount so i am done and i am going to open this up for questions it looks like there's some questions in the chat did you want to go ahead and read those out loud to me sure i can read those to you okay. so the first question says the intradermal needles that we used for lines in school were horrible dull and painful to insert I saw that, I'm going to mispronounce this, um, Sarin has intradermals, and I was going to get them. What do you use? So that's a very good question. Um, I don't know which ones you were using. Um, I use both. Well, I use three different things. Um, for the most part, I use the DBC intradermals. They're 0.14 gauge. They're not the highest quality needle but um most of the places you're going to use intradermals are like in the forehead uh maybe the crow's feet maybe the chin some lip wrinkles um if you use arnica gel and you use a tweezer to insert them and you do it properly quickly it shouldn't be too painful the reason why I like the DVCs is the way they're packaged. So it's a little piece of um, uh, uh, styrofoam and there's five needles on it. You could just pull them out. The serin needles are amazing. I would certainly recommend getting a box and trying them. The problem I have, I'm almost, I'm going to be 63 next month and um, I can't. I like, I got the arthritis fingers, you know, I'm trying to peel these things open. They're individually packaged. Each needle is in its own little packet, which sounds great, but you open it up and it's like, bing, you know, where did it go? You can't grab it with the tweezers, but you can use those around lips and you're never going to bruise somebody. So I, I keep them on hand. The third thing I use, Saren just came out with these needles, which I love. They're called 
Elipes, E-L-I-P-E-A-S. And they have a handle that's about this long and a teeny tiny little needle. And um, they're in a five pack. You just pop them open like this and you can pull them out and you can put them in and they're great to use as intradermals. The only thing is you really can't use them on the top lip because the handle would go like up the person's nose, but they're great for everywhere else. And they come in every gauge. So could you repeat the name of those needles? It's Elipes, E-L-I-P-E-A-S. I liked them so much. They, uh, I've been working with the Saren people since uh, dinosaurs were roaming the earth. Whenever they get a new toy, they send it to me. And the Elipis needles, they sent them to me. I like them so much. I made an infomercial about them. Um, but again, you can't use them. I, I guess you could, but they're kind of hard to get here. But you could use them everywhere else. Um, next, well, the questions are coming fast. Okay. Next question. To compete with spas doing facials, would you add LED, radio frequency, et cetera, and when, before, or after? So we can do radio frequency um, as far as I know. I don't know what all's going on in the Wild West out there in Arizona, but <laughs> I've not heard of uh, you want to call your acupuncture board and make sure, because uh, I've not heard that that's legal, but I do use and sell an LED light. Um, I I like the floor models because they're very versatile. The other ones, uh, they don't always get close enough to be effective and you can't use them on large areas. Um, and I don't use it after microneedling because microneedling is breaking down the collagen and the red light is building up the collagen. But I will put needles on and put the red light when I'm doing uh, cosmetic acupuncture. Do you and I don't think of myself as competing oh, with a spa. I'm a health professional. I have a, like a real degree and I can treat real things. Mm -hmm. You know, a Medi spa, they're great. They can treat your skin. Um, but that's it. And unless you get underneath, and this is a really important piece of, of understanding what we do, unless you get underneath what's going on with your patient, whatever's going on here is going to keep coming back, whether it's digestive issues, lung issues, emotional issues, um, they're not going to get that at a many spa. So, you know, that that's important. Um, okay. A third question is, do you use serums with your microneedling? Yes. So the pen comes with serums. They're all organic and vegan. And, um, if you want to learn more, again, I didn't want this to turn into an infomercial. If you want to learn more about the Aculift MicroPen, you can go to AculiftSkincare.com. You open up a free wholesale account. Even if you're a student, you just put in your student ID. And um, there's a wealth of information there. On um, And if you go to my my website, facialacupuncturaclasses.com. I have a ton of free webinars just like this one. And I have, because uh, I do them for the American Acupuncture Council every month. They're like 20 minutes long. But I have them on red light therapy and microneedling and stuff like that there. You actually have an additional question about the microneedling. Um, one microneedling cartridge per patient and how yes. much did the needle cartridge cost? Um, the Aculip cartridges are $4 um, each. And yes, they go in the sharps afterwards. You should not be drawing blood, but occasionally there can be pinpoint bleeding. And they're like acupuncture needles. You don't want to. So you have to charge 
enough money for your microneedling to pay for your gloves, your numbing cream, your serums. I send my patient home with a little take home kit um, of products that come with the pen um, and, you know, instructions and all of that. Uh, it's been, I, I'm telling you, I fought it and fought it and fought it. They say you can't treat, teach an old bird or dog or whatever new tricks, but I, I was sold on it and it helped me not just my eyebrows, um, just kind of overall uh, rejuvenating my skin, um, much more so than just dermarolling. Can you treat balding patients with microneedling on the head? Absolutely. Um, there's hundreds of studies out there. Um, as long as they have a hair follicle, it, it can't. Once the follicle is dead, that's it. But um, I have a whole protocol. Again, there's a free webinar on my website about microneedling for hair loss. Um, it's not like a full length training, but it's a, an overview. Um, but how you clean the scalp, how you numb the scalp, how you treat the scalp. And when you're growing hair, you do it more frequently because you're not trying to stimulate collagen. You're trying to grow hair. Are you coming back to Pima in the future? Uh, you mean besides <laughs> in, yeah, I usually go to Arizona every year. It may or may not be at Pima, but um, I, I really Say love we would Arizona. love to have you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'll come, I'll Dr. come. I'll, I'll, you know, I, again, um, it was just, uh, I, I was teaching in Australia this year and, and in London and I just, um, I just scheduled something, you know, at the, uh, at the courtyard because I've taught there probably a dozen times and it's just easy for me, easy in, easy out. I can walk into old town. Um, but, uh, we, we may do like a little one day, something, something, um, before my Scottsdale class, but I, I can't squeeze a training into one day so we'd have to figure that piece out okay we'll talk about it for sure yeah um what is your best practice doing cosmetic acupuncture on patients who have gotten botox or filler we're taught to wait about six months from their last botox treatment is that your best practice no well it depends everything it depends um so, uh, I mean, and, and, and then this is a very kind of a long lecture, so I'm just going to give you like the reader's digest version. Um, essentially, you want to avoid the area where they've had Botox for at least three weeks. After that, well, you don't want to do anything for three weeks because Botox can travel. And sometimes people don't remember where they had it. Like, oh, did they do it in my crow's feet? Did, you know, was it just my forehead? Oh, maybe she did a little bit around here and here. So you don't even want to touch them for three weeks. Then I tell my patients, you got to go and talk to the person who did your Botox and find out exactly where it was injected because I don't want to be needling there because I can make your Botox wear off. Now, you have to decide do you like the Botox? Do you want it to stay where it is? If so, I'm not going to needle there. A lot of times people get Botox and they want it out. They, it drives them crazy. So then you can, once it's been in there for about three weeks, you could do some cupping and gouache on, some needling, and it'll wear off. So that's my best practice for um Botox, I have, you know, the answer for filler is a little longer because there's so many different types of fillers, but for the neurotoxins, the and the Botox, the, I, I lost track of all the names of all of them, but um, yeah. Um, and our last question, I'm interested in the advanced certification. Do you recommend going through all the online modules prior to the hands-on portion? Uh, 
That is also a good question. The answer is no. The only m- mandatory modules that people must have before they take an online class is modules one and two, which is um, all the contraindications, precautions, the intake, the protocol, and that's pretty much modules one and two. Module three is Chinese face reading, skin care, microneedling. So that's kind of optional. Um, and module four is cupping in gua sha. And module five is the facial motor points and the submuscular needling. So I tell people at least do module one, two, four, and five before you come for a class so that you have four, two full days to practice all of these skills. Um, The rest of the modules that are in my advanced certificate course, um, a lot of it is, you know, self-care and um, just other things that um, you don't necessarily have to have before you take the in-person class. Awesome. Anybody else have any final questions for Dr. Dellis? That was your chance. 